Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from the lands of the Gadigal people. Before we get into today's episode, I wanted to let you know we're doing a listener survey and we want to hear from you about how you found the show this year and how we can make it even better. It's short, anonymous, and you can find the link in our show notes. Now for today's episode of ABC News Daily. As Americans prepare to head to the ballot box for the midterm elections, President Joe Biden's in deep trouble, with polling showing a surge in support for the Republican Party. That's great for Donald Trump, who's hinting again at a 2024 US presidential campaign bid. Today, co-host of Planet America, Chaz Lichardello, on the seats to watch and how President Biden could be about to lose his legislative power. Chaz, there's been such fierce campaigning happening in the US ahead of these midterm elections. Some of the political ads I've seen are pretty wild. They're they're crazy. Ads about abortion, about crime, about guns. Whitmer says she's going to work like hell to keep killing babies. This is designed to kill people. But if you're not a bad guy, I support your right to own one. I've been shooting and hunting my whole life. So when people say I won't support guns, they're dead wrong. Boom! America seems so polarised at the moment. It certainly is. Mm. Bad news for Joe Biden because one of the things that he ran on in 2020 was to, in inverted commas, unite America. It's time for us, for we the people, to come together and make no mistake. United, we can and will overcome this season of darkness in America. And you can't blame him necessarily for it not working because I don't think anyone could unite them. Mm. But the fact is they're not united in the slightest. Yeah, exactly. I want you to give me a bit of a quick snapshot now, a reminder of what these midterms in the US are, are all about. Okay. Now, this is not actually Joe Biden's election. He is not on the ballot at all. This is about... Congress. Mm-hmm. You have two uh, houses of parliament in, in America, just like Australia. The lower house, uh, like their equivalent of the House of Reps, is completely being re elected, all of them being re elected. Mm-hmm. And their Senate, like our Senate, they, you only have a portion of them being re elected at a time. You have a third of them being re elected for a six year term. The Senate's almost always 50 50 in America these days, so you can lose it every single two-year mm. election. So both the Senate and the House are up for grabs. You mentioned you know, Biden's not on the ballot, but there's a lot at stake here for him, isn't there? Because there is the potential that both those houses that you've just talked about could change hands. Yes. What is the polling showing? OK, well, what it's showing is there is absolutely no... Well, I shouldn't say no doubt, but there is very, very, very little doubt that the Republicans are going to take the House at least, the lower House, that is. Mm. There's a possibility they could take it by quite a lot. The upper House, the Senate, now that's where the question really is because the polls suggest that it is either 51-49 Republicans' way, 51-49 Democrats' way or 50-50. So we really, really are not going to know, possibly for days to come after the election. It's going to be really, really close. Mm, Really important for Joe Biden to hold on to the Senate. Tell me more about some of these Senate races. So where are the key areas? Where are the key seats? What are we seeing? Okay, well, the most key seat is probably Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And what you have there is you've got <laughs> you've got a television doctor, uh, Dr Oz, Mehmet Oz. Uh, who used to work for Oprah. I've spoken to young couples. They can't make the first payment on a new home. They can't, the mortgage rates are too high. I've spoken to young families. They're worried about crime. Families won't let their kids go out to the mailbox even these days because they find fentanyl in the mailbox. He's running up against a guy who was very popular. This is John Fetterman. But he had a stroke about 
Oh, six months ago mm. now. And he hasn't fully recovered at this point in time. And there's a real mystery over exactly how fit he is to be a senator himself because he hasn't released his medical, medical documentation at all. I had a stroke. He's never let me forget that. And I might miss some words during this debate, mush two words together, but it knocked me down, but I'm going to keep coming back up. There's Georgia, which is, there's a, a ex-footballer. <laughs> there's a lot of people who really shouldn't be politicians running in this, this, this Senate, these Senate races. At one time, science said man came from apes. Did it not? If that is true, why are there still apes? He uh, is a guy called Herschel Walker. Mm -hmm. He doesn't seem to know much of what's going on. He's been uh, in the centre of a number of sex scandals. And then there's Nevada as well, which there are two people, neither of whom have any scandals associated with them, which is nice, but uh, mm. they're probably the three key races. Let's now, Chaz, unpack two of the most likely outcomes. The first is that President Biden loses the House of Reps, which you've, you have said really could happen, yeah. but he retains the Senate. What happens in that scenario? What does it mean for his presidency? Okay, well, if he loses any house, either either house or both houses, mm. there's one thing that they all have in common, which is legislation stops. Mm. He needs to hold both houses in order to be able to pass anything because the Republicans from here on in are going to be very, very, very focused on the presidential election mm -hmm. and making sure that he loses the, the, the next presidential election. So they're not going to want to do, do him any favours at all. So if America moves into a recession, which a lot of people think is going to happen, there will be no rescue packages being passed. Mm. What the Republicans will do, because they're going to be focused on the presidential election, is investigations. Mm. There'll be constant investigations and oversight. They'll hold committee hearings and one of those hearings will almost undoubtedly be an impeachment hearing. If Democrats lose the House but the, the Democrats retain the Senate, you can expect Joe Biden to be impeached, I would have thought, at least once mm. and possibly more than once. That's what the next two years will be about. Mm, but she has impeached for what? In the way America works these days, it doesn't really matter. Mm. They'll find something. <laughs> they are, they're going to want to vote to impeach, regardless of if there's a good reason or not. Mm. They'll find a reason. Just return to this other scenario where he loses both of these houses because it's almost like he's powerless then. He can't do anything. When you're talking about this, the if he loses the Senate, there's a whole different range of levers of power that the Senate provides. If he loses the Senate as well, that will take that away. And what those levers of power are are appointments. Mm. So if the Democrats don't hold the Senate, that means the Republicans have control over if there are any new judges appointed or if there's any new members of his administration appointed. Mm. And there are hundreds and hundreds of people in an administration who are chosen by the Senate. So some of them are going to resign at some point in time. And Joe Biden will be left without a replacement because the Republicans will not appoint anyone, I'll tell you now. And just, just to unpack that, because the appointment of judges in the United States is, is quite different. I know it sounds strange to talk about judges as if they they belong to a party when they're not supposed to, but in America they act like they belong to a party. Mm. Back in 2014, the Republicans took the Senate and Barack Obama at that point in time lost the ability to control appointments of judges. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that a Supreme Court judge died and Barack Obama wanted to appoint a moderate to replace that Supreme Court judge, but... As it turned out, the Senate Republicans said, no, you're not going to appoint anyone. We're just going to leave a vacancy there. And they, they kept the vacancy open until Trump won the election in 2016 and then filled it up with a Republican judge, which kept the court Republican. And we saw them overturn Roe versus Wade and effectively remove the federal right to abortion this year because of that vote eight years ago in the midterms. Mm. So it has huge effects going forward. You mentioned Donald Trump and it's pretty amazing we've got this far through the conversation without saying his name. He's been really 
vocal through these midterms. He's attended a lot of election rallies. He was out there again on the weekend, hinting once again that he would be running for the presidency in 2024. I ran twice, I won twice, and I did much better the second time than I did the first. And now, in order to make our country successful, safe and glorious, I will probably have to do it again, but stay tuned. How important, Chaz, are these midterm elections for him? How important is it that he sees a big shift back to the Republican Party? Look, I would say whoever is the Republican nominee, and yeah, it may well be Trump, it will help them a lot if the Republicans at the very least take the House. Mm. I think that will that will help create a sense of chaos in America over the next two years. Not that America needs needs help having a sense of chaos, but have even more of a sense of chaos. Mm. And whenever there's a big mess in America, as far as politics goes, they don't look too closely at who's causing the mess. They just punish the president. Mm. Well, Chaz, there's a huge amount at stake this week in US politics, a huge amount at stake for the President Joe Biden. What is your prediction for the midterms? And... For the presidential race. Okay. Well, I would predict for the, the, the House of Reps, that's easy enough. That's definitely going Republican, I would say. Mm-hmm. And I'd say that they're going to have a medium-sized margin there, like about probably about 20 seats or so, I'd say. Mm-hmm. As far as the Senate goes, now that one's tough. I am, at this stage, I am going to say, oh, I'm going to say Republicans 51-49. I think they might just, just get, but, but the last seat, the 51st seat, I think, is going to be decided in what they call a runoff, which is a second election in a month's time. Mm-hmm. As far as the presidency goes, I would say that Trump is going to run. Mm-hmm. And I think that Trump is going to win the the Republican primary. But, oh, man, that's that's close as well because he's got a lot of problems. Mm. So it's, uh, <laughs> nothing's predictable in America. <laughs> we will not hold any of that to you, but it's always good to have a prediction. Thanks, Chaz. We are one movement, one people, one family and one glorious nation under God. We will make America great again. Thank you. Chaz Lichardello is co-host of Planet America on ABC TV. You can find it on iView. The midterms are the first nationwide poll since Donald Trump left the White House. This episode was produced by Flint Duxfield and Chris Dengate, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer this week is Sydney Peed. I'm Sam Hawley. Don't forget to take our listener survey. The link is in the show notes. ABC News Daily will be back again tomorrow. You can find all our episodes of the podcast on the ABC Listen app. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to listen to more free podcasts or download the ABC Listen app and stream ad-free.